The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Bowser Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. We're looking on this, uh, what is Wednesday, the 11th of May. We're looking at the Dow having had a, the futures up sharply yet again, just same as yesterday. The only difference is that after the CPI report, which I think was 8.2, which is higher than expected, or it was in the higher range, the market just tanked. But we've come back strongly, and I want to just mention that for subscribers to my opening call, I did send out an update, should have arrived just at about 10 o'clock, just before I did the news, and um, just to reinstitute the positions that we had earlier on. And uh, what we're looking at here, and some of you might not have been able to get them because everything happened so quickly, doesn't matter. <clears throat> we're looking at the Dow up 234 points. 32,397. So that what I've shown subscribers this morning is that in the Dow chart, this Chapman Wave inside wedge target, this is, this is, does two things. One is it's a target support line in the Chapman Wave is called the inside wedge target support line. The little pink dashed line is the, is the one we're following. But within that, and it made a lower low uh, quite a bit after the left side, right side price time match, but it got really close on that low that was made on the 2nd of May at 32,449. Now, what's really interesting about this, see, this is the what I call the Chapman Wave inside track propellant line. If it breaks down, it becomes a resistance line. That's number one. Number two is the unbalanced volume, this blue line, is very going there, was was becoming a little bit oversold. The stochastic was at, is at 9%. That is so ridiculously low, but it can still go low. Remember, under under 10% uh, is like over 90%. Under 20% is like over 80%. So we're in the, in the oversold, but the, you remember, I always like to think that underneath 20%, is where that's what you want if you are short. You want to see the, the prices remain there. And on the upside, over 80%, if you're long, that's where you want prices to remain. So this is getting to the level where you have to use other techniques. And the techniques I was looking at to say that there should be some kind of a turnaround here, or at least the, an attempt, is because of the power of this bounce level, this trampoline, declining trampoline bounce level, if in fact all selling was dissipated, anything that happened either prior, for after 8.30 prior to the 9.30 market open, Eastern time, or up until 10 o'clock, as we come out of it, there could be a lot of wriggling and woggling but in fact, what we really want to see is this the start of some kind of oversold market condition. And I'll show you in each one. Look, the S&P. I lost some of my data. I had to shut down. I don't know what's going on. I think it's because TradeStation gets so overwhelmed. I've, I haven't had that for years. I might have to update and get a higher uh, a system. Yeah, I thought it was very high, but it doesn't matter. I'll get something new if I need it. But when I'm looking at the... Um, yeah, I, I put in all these different lines. I have to do them over again. This is showing exactly the same thing. In the S&P, you've got to the Chapman Wave inside, uh, inside track support level. You hit it almost exactly. And now you're attempting, it's just an attempt, to try to form some kind of a tradable bounce. Oh, all of these things I have to change. I did them before. I lose them. And oh, not only that, when I have to shut down prematurely without a guarantee that it's being saved, I lose all the data that, that I've done um, up most recently. And it goes back and for some reason charts that are very old come back again 
and the newest chart, I don't know how to explain it. It goes into a library. I'm, this is 15 years I've been trying to figure out. I haven't figured it out yet. When it shuts down prematurely and I haven't been able to save, I lose data. Because this, none of this is automated. Every single chart that you see here is notated by me by hand. So obviously there's a lot of work to be done. I don't do every chart. I'm just saying the chart, most recent charts and some of the very older charts I have to read you. All right. In fact, I wonder if I even got that one that I redid this morning. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so we're looking at the S&P. Off the low, it hasn't taken out the low of yesterday, which was... 395817. I have to change this. 3955817. I have some questions about Chapman Wave on the way down. Is it as accurate as on the way up? And the answer is the notations and everything absolutely there. The, maybe the interpretation, my interpretation sometimes isn't necessarily 100%, but everything here, look. Uh, I said sell signal. We went to a sell mode in the Dow. The Dow is still in a sell mode. The s and is in a sell mode. I said the month, weekly charts or in sell modes. And we will know very soon whether we're going to get a sell signal in the monthly charts. Well, if you look at the Dow, that's still a peak E. We've gone down to a leg B. And this is something I wanted to show you as well. Look at this. This is the QQQ. Now, I have, um, over the years, a lot of my techniques have morphed. They've become a little bit more uh, focused as I've learned more about all the different techniques that I practice almost every single day, many times a day, in fact. So what I'm looking at here is that the single leg down, leg A in the monthly chart, uh, I knew it was going to happen. Okay. That is a PG. Now, in the monthly chart, there's no other way I can count it because we took out that left side low, and that's going to be very important. So that is an F. There's no alternate count. That is uh, an E, no alternate count. And it just went up sequentially, peak A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. So when the question came in, and I've spoken about this forever, that yes, in the... Uh, in the um, in the monthly charts, even though I've got a leg B going to a peak B in the S&P, everything else, all the other indices, and that's the reason why I took it so seriously, and that's the reason why we are in such a high cash position, one of the highest cash positions we've had in a long time, even taken off one of our two year, I think it is, uh, longs, uh, it hit one of our stops, uh, the final stop. So we've had huge gains in that. The last one was 59% gain. We're out. We got that cash. We're ready. So a single leg down, like a straight line move, says two things to me. One is that if in a shorter time frame there's a major buy signal, you could have a really strong move to the upside. That's number one. Number two is another way to look at it is you could, you could have a number of bars in this time frame that have come down in a straight line, but the shorter time frame can give you a rally that makes a trough, and then you go to a slightly lower low after that huge extension down. So I'll talk about that in a moment. But in the meantime, the Dow is up 222, the S&P is up 20, and we've got the QQQs. Uh, Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. We're back, and we're looking at a Dow that's really uh, the sellers are just salivating, and that's not a good sign. Remember, yesterday I spoke about hubris. Hubris, uh, for instance, someone buying uh, uh, every single um, big cap, or at least uh, um, high tech stock or tech stock, uh, on every every dip, and thinking that's great. And then seeing them tumble uh, 60, 70, 80 percent, 90 percent in some cases. Uh, GT just mentioned in the email, you, which is not you, but not Y-O-U, but you, the uh, symbol you. Uh, we've followed this forever. We once, I think we had it just for a, a day or something like this. Way up, going to the 210 round number high. This is Unity Software, game creating software. I remember... I wonder, I bet I've lost it, but I, th I think I typed it in. I remember hearing Kramer interview. There it is. No. Oh, no. Kramer interviewing the CEO. Um, this is November. It was sometime in November after an earnings report, and they, they had made a 210 round number. I think it was just afterward, or maybe just before. And the CEO, I. I remember someone in the den, and I, I mentioned it to you, and then someone in the den said, oh, yeah, the CEO was really going on. And I said to myself, I said, the CEO made it sound like this was just the perfect solution for every software package, gaming, uh, video, whatever it is. It just sounded absolutely amazing, like almost all the CEOs coming on for interviews on uh, CNBC. Uh and I can't believe it because it was up. It was definitely over 200. And we're at <clears throat> $32 right now. Gap down, earnings, Unity. Uh, the other one, Affirm, we were looking at that. And it sounds fantastic. Unity, game-creating software. The guy sounded absolutely amazing. And then Affirm holding, interest-free and interest-bearing. I remember the CEO, same thing. Have I got lost all that? Uh, no, there it is. The peak effort, 176.65 in November. And uh, 176.65, oh my, it's at $16.91 right now. This is, yeah, I, I don't know what, I don't know what more the bears are asking for because if you haven't taken profits at this particular point and said, wow, that is fantastic, I think you're being a little greedy right here. Uh, yes, it could go broke at 16, 
But if you're starting a new short right here, you give, that's where it's far more dangerous. So I just really wanted to mention, just to kind of put into perspective what we're looking at. There, were there was talk about a crash coming up. You know, this is, this is a market that's just going to wear the bulls out slowly but surely. But every time you think it's great because you've shorted and you're just perfect, unless you've taken immediate gains or you've gotten into those stocks that had whopping moves to the downside, just the, the trend change was a monthly trend change, not just a daily pop. Um, these very, very short-term trades, both on the long side and the short side, they just take you apart. Unless you get your profits, you take it out and you say, great. So, um, and with that in mind, we've got this huge cash position. Absolutely, I want to start putting it to work. We started putting it to work. I hope for those of you who get my newsletter, you got my update. Update said, repeat, wash, repeat, wash, and that's what we've done. I believe that this is the one that has the best chance of, of seeing sustained a sustained move. Uh, days here, uh, it does up 9,300, S&P's up 34. Nice start. Uh, look at the E-mini. I drew this. I didn't finish it because I was my show came back live while I was drawing, but this is what I do all the time in my own work. I drew a left side, right side price time match in the cup formation or the arch formation. I draw the Chapman wave inside wedge uh, target resistance line. This is live. This is pe people who were looking at the den earlier on during my commercial break were looking at this, and I had this as a price time move to go back to the 9.52 high in the E-mini, S&P at 4.03.4036.25. Uh, we haven't got there yet. It's got another, it's actually got another six or seven minutes to do. Oh, we just did it. Breaking out in a shorter time frame, and that means this is peak A right here. This is peak A. This is peak B. And if this is a, if, if we push sharply above this left side high of peak D, then what, and the, and the stochastics are 92%, that's fabulous. Bank D is good. That just says that we should go in the Chapman wave. This is called, <clears throat> let me just get this right here. This is called the Chapman wave cup and ladle pattern. Not yet. It has to still break a little higher in leg C. I don't want this to occur in leg D because then that's going to be double top. But if this is a leg C, it should go sharply above that previous peak D and then pull back, use D as a support level if it comes back at all, and then go to a leg D. So it's extremely bullish on the, the I'm talking about a one minute chart. So that's uh, it's just, that's what I'm talking about. If this pulls back here from peak C, it means you've got limited just for the one minute chart. Remember, I'm not talking about a lifetime, no matter one minute chart. And in the two minute chart, you can see 40, 40 is the next resistance, 40, 34, we've just gone above. And in the week, and the 120 minute chart, this is extremely bullish. That's one of the reasons why I sent out that report uh, at 10 o'clock to subscribers, because I see enough evidence to say it might be a struggle, but the low that was made was purely an emotional letdown and that strong plunge to the low of 40, oh, sorry, 39.55.25, no, 39.47.25. Uh, at nine o'clock, that might have been the give up from, uh, you know, all the bulls that thought, okay, great. For two days, we've had huge rallies, pre-market, and that's going to hold. All right, enough with that. Got a lot of questions coming in. Let me just go to them. So the TLT. The TLT bonds down a dollar at 141.72. So far, nothing too much has changed. And what happens is... In the yields, oh, I, I can do this because I had to restart, so I'm all fresh. Let's go there. In the yields, what we're looking at for the first time is that there is some indication that an attempt is being made by the bonds to form some kind of a base so that the yields can bump into resistance. And you can see 30.18, uh, that's already history. Uh, the high already on the white, which is the TYX, so far this week is 
32.77, oh my goodness, that's a big move, three, not for those of us who remember 18% uh, interest rates, That, but in the meantime, that is the high, and this is a leg E, and this is the way exactly a leg E going just above the left side high, which is this whole series of highs right here. 34.55 was a high. The week of the second is a weekly chart of the three yields. The white is the TYX, the 30 year, the brown is the TNX, and the cyan is the five year. So we're above, we're now in between that one from uh, November of 2018 and the high that was made uh, the first week of March of 2019. That was 18. So this is 19 and 21. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Hi everyone, I want to stay on this page. Just want to show you the rectangle formation in the Wood iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF going towards the bottom of the range. It's trading at 86 right now. It made an all time high of 98.98, and the key support level is at about 84, maybe just a tad under, but around about 84, 83 to 84. <clears throat> and it is trading at 86 right now, 86.09. And the HGX, which is a Philadelphia housing index, underneath its rectangle trading range, made a one arch and a second arch, like a really large lopsided M formation or a failed cup formation. And now it's trading at uh, 390. <clears throat> it is up 58 cents on the day. So this is telling me that there's a really good chance that yields on the shorter term Maybe it's sideways. It doesn't say it's a major top. It doesn't say it's a major sell signal. It just says if 
the high of 32.77, we're at 31.57 for the TYX, the 30-year uh, T-bond yield, <clears throat> has a pullback. It could pull back to maybe the 27s, 28 to 27 area, 2.8, 2.7 area, um, and then maybe go higher. We'll see. But that's I'm just wanted to show you this chart just to say that there are signs, enough signs, not all the way around, just to suggest that maybe some of the inflationary aspect, the market can start to respect that some of the inflationary aspects are not there. Now, I can't say that if I'm talking about crude oil <clears throat> up five bucks at 104.73. Um, uh, a guy who's doing some work for me <clears throat> said that he's, he, he got this uh, eight months ago, he got this Mercedes van and he specially chose diesel because diesel was lower than, <laughs> lower than the petroleum products and gas. And uh, he was telling me a couple of days ago, he says, I can't believe it. I, f I, I don't even fill up my truck anymore. It's just it's just too expensive because um, I'm using diesel. I don't know. Does anybody out there uh, know? I should have looked it up. Um, yes. Uh, anybody out there? Can Do you know what the... Um, Diesel, I don't ever, I've never looked up this, it's the uh, diesel futures. I don't even know what the symbol is. So just to anyone, if at any point, if you get a chance, I guess I could put it in here. Um, symbol for diesel futures. Are you sure? That's no, that's heating oil. That's not diesel. I get HO. Oh, I don't know what it is. Um, I go six dollars a gallon futures. Oh my god. Uh, wow. And of course, in Europe, a lot of people drive diesel cars. Uh, okay, so Vin Diesel. Uh, yeah, heating oil I can do. Look, HO. Oh, of course, I haven't got it updated. This is the one that I think I did last night. Then spend some time on because I'd already lost it once. And let me see if I've got it. Or is it just a naked chart? Naked chart. No, no, there it is. Oh, no, this is the old chart. And I redid it. So this is going to a peak D, <coughs> heating oil, acting quite well today. Um, I remember this is a brand new A. Yeah, let me just do this. Look. Here's a new. All these letters you see because it gets smoothed out. This is the continuous contract. So it always gets smoothed out. So I always have to change where the letters are, not the letters themselves, just where they are, because they always, that's why when I have a stock split, you can see that, um, so this is a plus sign on that D, and heating all healthy. Look, the nine over the 14 is still very, very strong. That means that there's still, and this is, folks, I don't know to tell anybody this. I'll break it to you very gently. This is the spring. And in some cases, it's already the summer. And heating oil is up at 4.04. 4.04. It was back in March at 1.95. I can't believe this. I have to see this again. It was at 1.95 on the 15th of March, the low. And the high just uh, on the 2nd of May was 4.27. You know, these prices, I, this is something we, I remember somebody, in fact, somebody sent me a note there. I was going to mention it because it sounded like it was a political statement, but it absolutely wasn't. You remember uh, over a year ago, about a year and a half ago, I said, uh-oh, Jimmy Carter redux. Get your sweaters ready. Um, and I suppose it was a political statement, but it's just that I was looking at everything. I was looking at oil. I was looking at a bunch of things and I thought, oh no, do I have to live through that Jimmy Carter period again? Ay, 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 that was not pleasant. Um, I'm not talking about him as a president, I'm talking about the period of Jimmy Carter. Um, wow. Um, whew. That'll be tough. So we'll see. And in the meantime, back at the ranch, uh, what we're all looking at here is the Dow's giving back a little bit. It's down uh, up to 35. It's a up 22. This is a this is a shake and bake moment. It's a it's a period where there are enough there are enough signs 
of an overbought, oversold situation, an overbought situation in the VIX index. Let me just go to the VIX. But it still says, I do not want to put a huge amount of money to work here. I, I just want to, I want to see, I want to use a sieve to see which, which stocks on the upside can break through barriers and show me over the next week and a half if there is a rally. Where the strength is, is a Microsoft, fantastic company. Well, I just want to mention the VIX index is down $1.50 at 31.48. It's ignoring any uh, market weakness so far. We'll see if that can stay through the day. Look, Microsoft should have had a much better bounce. It's a great company, but maybe this is what I was talking about yesterday when I said, I think that the rollover and the reason why I don't think, the question was, have we made the low or we, is this going to be a, a really serious low? And my answer is no, I think it's a series of lows. It's an earthquake and a number of after effects, the, 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 the tremors. And because of it, you'll have, select moves to the upside and unless i can pick a particular stock that i really think is absolutely fantastic i have one on my list that i'm going to start we, we're already long i'm going to start adding adding to it um yes uh, jb i remember 1970s very well i also remember it as a fantastic trading uh, period the 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 late, latter part of the of the 70s when i, I got back to uh, trading and Granville was around, and I, that's where I developed a lot of my indicators because I used to get buy signals, and then suddenly uh, um, I'd read that um, Granville got a, a buy signal. And then I'd get a sell signal, and usually I got sell signals because I had done real well, and then all of a sudden I was going in and out and in and out and giving back huge gains, and the market was going nowhere. And I said, uh-oh, I'm out of here. And then I'd wait for the next signal. And then I, I noticed how it corresponded to... Uh, Joe Graham, remember Joe Graham in the 1970s, I know people make fun of him. He was fantastic. Comes the 80s, uh, something just, I don't know what happened to him, but it was just terrible. But anyway, that was for me the start between him. I think it was Stan Weinstein. Oh, it was, what's his name? Where's the book right there? The Day Trader. Was it The Day Trader? Oh, so let me see if I can look to the side here. Um, what was his name? Oh, Jake Bernstein. Another one, Jake Bernstein. I used his book. That's where I really started using these MACDs and Stochastic. I don't remember if those are the ones that he used, but I remember that's when I started using those things. And it's like the perfect technique. So Gals are 359. I like that. I'll be back in a moment. Gals are chapping, talking about trying to hammer out a, a, a bottom, and then I'm going to just run through stocks. I got a whole list of stocks. Yeah. Yeah. So. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. You know what? Today's Wednesday. Maybe tomorrow I'll have a little fun. We'll do this live. Now, talking about live, you've got um, Larry Pizzavento coming up Tuesday. It should be a phenomenal program, a, ph a phenomenal uh, all-day webinar. Just check it out, front page of TFNA. You know how good Larry is, and you know how great he is when it comes to these one-day seminars. And uh, I just I recommend, if you are serious about, <clears throat> about using, learning and using your techniques live and watching it done live and following it live and learning, Nothing could be better. Here we go. We're looking at, okay, I've got questions here. Let me go. Um, we've got Apple. Question about Apple. What do I do about my long-term buy and hold in Apple? Well, you didn't tell me where you got in. All I can say is if it's a long-term buy and hold, I don't see. Apple has revenue coming in. Um, oh, and we have a caller. Not, not only do we have... Revenue coming in, but we have a call. We've got Mike in Cresco, Pennsylvania. Hi, Mike. How are you? Do I have Mike? Hello? Yes. Yes. Hi, Mike. How are you? Hello? Hello. You're, you're on. What would you like to look at? Basil, I, I've got a small position I picked up this morning in SSO. What are your thoughts on that? I have a resistance area that I'm looking at at around $53.33. What, what, uh, this is going to be just a short-term trade with a tight stop. So under the conditions that we're looking at right now, I do not at all want to change your thinking because you stated very clearly what your objectives are. So because this is the S&P, Pro shares ultra S and P 500. You're looking at a multiple of just the S and P and the spy itself. So let me just show you a couple of things here. I think I oh, probably lost the. Now I've got the data. I've got the spy itself. Do you mind if just for the moment I go to the spy because it'll be obviously applicable sure. to you? Okay. So in the spy, the way the three. Now I've got to double check. Was that the exact low? Uh, three. Uh, 394.82, yes, was the low yesterday. Today's sell-off was so intense, and yet it did not take out that low. So because you and I are in the same position with a multiple, uh, you've got the SSO for subscribers, we've got something in one of the indices that's also, this is a three times long, we're in the same position. So the first thing that we've got to look at is, I'm using the SPY as an example, uh, the SQQ has exactly the same pattern. Let me check it out. Sometimes it's slightly different, but this should be exactly the same. Why is that? It's SQ. Um, no, come on. What did I just do? So, SSQ. Oh, is it SQQ or is it SQ? SSQ. Why am I not writing it correctly and it's not coming up? Uh, let me get that question again. Uh, SSO. Where did I get a cue from? SSO. Whew. Okay. You know, it's one of those days. I've already had a shutdown. I've lost data, and I got back in time, and then I managed to get an update from my subscribers. It's just been one of those days. So the SSQ is 
Oh, it's slightly different. My eye picks it up as slightly different. Yeah, slightly different because the angle of today's low is just a different, different to the to the um, spot. Right. So what I'm looking at here is what you want to see. First of all, you have a stop in on your SSO at this particular point. Um, I'm just I'm just trailing it. I can't tell you exactly where I have it at at this point. Okay, but kind of you, you, you have a stop in mind, and you're using it as a training. That's all I want to know. That's number one. Yeah. Number two is what I really would like to see. So now let me do. All I want is the kickoff today. <clears throat> if we get a really good kickoff and a decent close, a decent close for the SSO at 51.70 right now would be anything above 51.62 higher. Preferably more short covering uh, comes in and the shorts don't have the power to push it down very much, and you go above, one penny above yesterday's high of 52.41, starts gray leg A. That's what you really want to see. I've got a lovely V-shape in the on-balance volume. The stochastic's at 8.72, hopeless. It just needs to cross and move up. The MACD is, is not great, so you need price to lead it, okay? So this is what I'd be looking at. I, in fact, I'll use the SSQ right now because that's what we're looking at together. The high that was made yesterday in the 120-minute chart, of course, is the same number, said 52.41. That's still quite a way to go on the upside. Uh, so what I would say to you is I don't want to interfere with your trading short. <clears throat> the only thing I'm going to suggest <clears throat> is if you have enough of a position if it hits your target on the upside, and for me, the big test will be the gap, uh, the 11.30 uh, open, uh, where the high was 52.57, and the, the low was 53.17. If by Friday, without pulling back sharply, we've actually managed to fill that gap in the 120-minute chart, that was the gap of the ninth, then I'm going to suggest to you, in your mind, you might not want to do this, but in your mind, you want to say, you know what, I've got a trading stop, hopefully it's held, and I'm going to take something off because that's what my goal was. This is, right. this is just a suggestion. I don't want to say you have to do it. I'm just saying this is the way I would think about it. Why? Because if by Thursday afternoon going into Friday, there has actually been a strong move to the upside that's been able to hold most of each session, that's just going to change the minds of a lot of people to say, I better start covering all those shorts. <clears throat> and there must right. be, I mean, when I look at the put call ratio, I haven't seen it lately, but it was getting very, very heavy on the put side. I suspect that you've got a, a rally that 53.68 is the nine period moving average, the pink nine period moving average on the SSO. I don't want to get carried away. I'm just saying, if we do get this kind of a rally, and the technicals are going to take much more to improve. I would take off my goal, but I keep something on the side saying, you know what, if it goes higher, I'd rather have a trading stop on the leftover that just locks in at least a pretty decent profit on that leftover section and keep you in the trade because your mind will be clear. You'll be able to know whether you want to add to it by Thursday afternoon, Friday. By Friday morning, we might looking, might be looking at the SSO back at 50. But I'm just saying right. there's enough, there's just enough evidence right now for me to say an, a very over soul condition can become more than just a bounce. It could actually become a trade into next week. And that's all I'm saying to you. So don't right. don't change your goals. I'm just saying maybe if you do hit that goal, you can keep some of your position. And then call okay, me again. Basil, we'll... where, again, where would you where would you think would be a good place to have the stop? Because I'll tell you what, I'm, I'll admit I'm not I'm not very good at where I place my stops a lot of times because a lot of times it gets hit and then it takes off higher. So if you're looking at it like on a um, thirty minute chart, uh, um, okay, where would it. you where would you want to keep the stop at? So you see how it's pulling back from, this is actually a peak E in that one minute chart in the E mini and it's pulling back, but it's gone to a leg B and that tells me, and stochastic in the E mini is uh, the 10 minute chart is still at 86%. That's good. The, the MACD is good. So let's take you and grab a 30 minute chart if I can find one right here. Um, 
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. With market volatility roaring back in April, Larry Pesavento has just announced a five-hour live trading webinar coming up on May 17th. Larry Pesavento is a 56-year trading veteran and has mastered his trading skills through many different market fluctuations. Join Larry on May 17th as he hosts a live five-hour trading webinar from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Time, giving you insight into how he analyzes the market and decides his plays. Larry will delve deep into the ABCD trading pattern, explaining how to structure your trading day, the times most likely to generate signals, which signals to ignore, and how to use the pattern to mitigate risk. In this all-day five-hour live trading webinar, take a seat by Larry's side as he trades the market markets real time, including the Dow and S&P 500 E-mini, crude oil, natural gas, gold, treasury bonds, wheat and soybeans, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar yen, and more. If you've ever wanted to get inside the mind of a market master, you cannot miss this live trading webinar. To sign up today, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, right, folks. We're back. I didn't realize that my the commercial didn't come through uh, until I, my engineer reminded me that I was in a break. Sorry. Um, so what we're looking at here is the uh, there was a sharp pullback to the 4111 level. So what I'm going to suggest to you is uh, you, you've already had a gain in this, and now you might be like break even. Is that correct? Okay, I bought at fifty dollars and fifty cents. My oh, stock great. now is at fifty dollars and seventy cents. You think that's okay. good, or you think fabulous? Even, you know, I was, I was going. That, you're within within pennies of what I was going to say to you, not knowing where you got in, just looking at the chart because. It held 51.11, the 200 period moving average in the one minute chart on the SSO. If it pulls back further now, it's really going to test the 51. This is exactly the moment where the shorts have to say, ha, got you again. And then the bulls come in and you have to move higher. This is really important. So you, you got in beautifully and you've had a pretty decent uh, rally all the way to the, you know, in the 51.90 um, area. Now you want to see a move up right now. So this is what I'm saying to you. Stay with your stops. You have to now take out today's high of okay. uh, 50, 51.90. As soon as it does that, start implementing a higher short, uh, a higher stop. And then you can move it up 50 cents. or so you feel comfortable with the stop. Just continue. If you get taken out, you can always do it again. But you don't want to right. lose money now, right now. You're making money, stay in that making money position. So that's I keep that same stuff, move it up about 50 cents or so, 
if we can get to 5192. And I would do that. I, I'd use the same increments on the way up. If you can get there, if you're still staying in along uh, at the close today, then I would, you know what, if at the close today it closes near the high, why don't you take a little bit off? Because anything can happen overnight. Absolutely. That's a, okay. Hey, thank you very much for calling. I appreciate that. <laughs> and we'll, we'll find out tomorrow how this one went. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Bye, Mike. Let me know. Uh, folks, uh, we're going to wrap it up now. I didn't get all those stocks now tomorrow. I 